So what I'll show you are uh, certain glimpses and not uh, glimpses of only uh, what they can do, but also glimpses of what a struggle can do. So we are going to talk about the combat against such a non-secular aggression. Well, uh, I call it the rule of law versus the rule of aid. And what we are trying to give you some glimpses is of the judiciary and the mass violence. And we are going to talk about what uh, uh, Mr. Mittal was just talking about. Um, now, I, 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 I'll just give a very quick, uh, because we have had a uh, uh, very uh, important discussion and discourse on uh, secularism. So I'll quickly go through what I think secularism stands today. Many believe that the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 <coughs> gave rise to the modern nation states clothed with secular power as distinct from the authority of the religious church and authority. But the real question is, did it solve the problem of the racial, religious, ethnic minority? Let's see how people have dealt with it differently. I know, I think you know these two guys. <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> Even after about 300 years of the Westphalia Treaty, Hitler had declared that two racial groups cannot coexist in one nation and one should face elimination. That is a simple formula. Now, uh, Mr. Gulwalkar, who again, I think you know, he is from RSS, he was more charitable. And he said that the minorities could live in one nation if they accept the rule of majority. Gujarat, which is the laboratory for our friends from RSS, this is what they are trying to do. They want to prove that it is the majority that can prove. And the minority, if it wants to exist, it has to exist under the obligation of the majority. This is the whole uh, thing what they are doing. Well, the Indian state professed secularism to be the basic structure of its constitution, but nobody is sure what that means. Nobody has yet defined it. In periods of communal violence, the three pillars of the Indian secular state starts cracking. Can the minorities rely on the judiciary in the moments of crisis? That's one of the questions that I think should be posed and should be answered. Well, there he is. Uh, uh, I'm giving you a short brief uh, uh, brief of the events. A sporadic skirmish between the Ram Sevaks and the local Muslims of Godra on 27 February 2002 led to the unfortunate death of 58 passengers. We all understand it was a very tragic incident. But instead of pacifying the emotions of the people, Modi declared it as a pre-planned terrorist attack against one community. VHP gave a bunch call supported by BJP. The stage was set next day for the violence. And this was a mechanism of violence. Not many people have understood it, but we have got much more details on this. What they did, they brought the dead bodies from Godhra to Ahmedabad and they rallied it as a funeral rally. And more than 50,000 people had gathered. That's the one that exploded into the violence. The 54 dead bodies were carried by in trucks to Ahmedabad by Sri Jayadeep Patel. He was the main executor of the entire violence. The leader of EHP and the funeral marches were held on 28th, igniting the emotions of the community. The next three days were devastating for the Muslims of Gujarat. Over a thousand innocent men, women, and children were butchered. Million was of the property. These are all known facts. Every effort was made to break the economic backbone of the Muslims and boycott them as a community. The state machinery either watched the whole program passively or connived. The criminal justice system was entirely paralyzed in the first few weeks and citizens were not permitted to even register criminal complaints. I think somebody had made a, a very important uh, uh, comment here today that in Gujarat, every single complaint was filed only by the police. And the first paragraph of it was all common, 3,000 of them. I, I, I've collected the whole statistics. All said that because of the horrendous death of the Hindu, 58 Hindus, the mob reacted. 
So they, 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 the, the whole imagery was that because of the Godra, the entire violence took place. So what we did, we, the organization which I belong to, is done some much money. We had uh, cut out our task this way. The foremost task was to help rehabilitate the victim and provide legal aid. Then next one was very important, that Nanavati Commission, participate in the Nanavati Commission to collect information. We had no illusion about the result. Struggle for the repeal of quota. Now this was one of the most dangerous things that, uh, that was used, the law. I'll come to that a little later. Then to expose the cases of fake encounters and to bring police officers to justice. Uh, I don't know what Arvind Bhai will tell me. Uh, to unite the people of communities in the defense of secular democracy and the rule of law. <coughs> now, uh, these tasks were worked out for the reason that we could see the politics. We understood what exactly was the plan of action. You see, what Modi wanted to do was to join up the global war against uh, jihad. You see, he was borrowing many, many words from, well, not any other country, but this country. Whatever Bush's language was, he had picked up that language. So it was a war against Islamic terrorism. So Godra was projected and presented to the people as an act of Islamic terrorism. So entire investigation, everything was tilted and focused towards proving that it was an uh, Islamic terrorist act. Then comes Nanavati. Nanavati was brought in to make an inquiry and prove their point. Simple as that. It was the other way around. It, it was not for the truth. It was to prove the point that government was making. And then they brought in Pota. Because Pota was required, they put in 400 or more uh, Muslim youth in the jail by once again dubbing them as terrorists. Islamic terrorists. Because of one or two small small uh, bomb uh, explosions. Uh, well, I've, I have fought most of the cases of the, uh, those terrorist matters, and I found that uh, there was absolutely no element of terrorism. we we'll come to that also. Uh, then the next was the most dangerous, was to pose uh, Modi as a Hindu icon who would be targeted by the uh, terrorists from all sides of the world. So these encounters which took place in Gujarat are different from all other encounters. There was no, no commerce behind it, no money behind it. It was pure political. They used to uh, kill them. And the FIR which used to be registered by the police always carried one line. That he had come, or he or she, they have killed two ladies also, that they had come to kill Modi. But every FIR, as if the terrorists have no other work in this world, <coughs> <laughs> except to target Modi. So every FIR carries that. And then lastly, all this was aimed for what purpose? It was like a surgical knife they were, uh, Modi was using to divide the people. And that's where the real politics lie. So our last task was to unite. And there we had actually concentrated on mass work. Okay. Now, this was, this was an inquiry. It's not so... Now, what we tried to do, now I'm coming to some, can you get this light? Yeah, shut the light. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's better. You see, what we, uh, uh, let me tell you as an activist, you see, we were not uh, really sitting uh, as spectators. We were actually working in the field. So we <coughs> wanted as much of evidence to be collected, and we used Nanavati Commission for that purpose. It was one of the best places where we could, get, we could get evidence. And from there you see what evidence we got. Now Godra, remember, was 